Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is the first seminar of uh, the year on this uh, Instituto de Astrofisica de Andalucía here in Granada, in Spain. And today we will have the talk by uh, Dr. Adriana Ocampo from NASA headquarters. And she will talk about the uh, Lucy mission, exploring the unexplored. Dr. Adriana Campo is currently a science program manager at NASA headquarters science mission directorate in the planetary science division responsible for the New Frontier program. As the New Frontier lead program executive, she is responsible for the Juno mission to Jupiter, the New Horizon mission to Pluto, and 2004 MU69, and the asteroid sample return Osiris Rex. She is also the lead Venus scientists responsible for NASA's collaboration in ESA Venus Express mission, JAXA Venus Climate Orbiter, and the Venus Exploration Analysis Group. Dr. Ocampo was a research scientist at the California Institute of Technology in Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where she worked since uh, 1973. Then in 2005, she was the investigation scientist for the Mars Odyssey gamma ray spectrometer and also worked for the Mars Program Science Division and the Solid Earth and Natural Disaster Program. She worked at ESA from 2002 from, uh, to 2004 as a senior research staff member responsible for conducting research in comparative planetology of solar system bodies. Dr. Ocampo also completed her back Bachelor of Science degree at California State University in Los Angeles in geology with the emphasis in planetary science. She completed her Master of Science in Geology also at California State University with a thesis on Chicxulub impact crater in Mexico. She was born in Barranquilla in Colombia and raised in uh, Argentina. She came to Caltech at JPL, JPL as a high school student where she has the opportunity to, uh, to gain experience in planetary science. So I think she's a very qualified person to talk about this uh, wonderful mission that will be launched in less than one month. And uh, no more introduction. Uh, Adriana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Rene. Thank you. And I want to thank you especially for giving me this opportunity to share all the excitement about the Lucy mission that indeed, like you mentioned, is uh, we are at 14, 40, uh, 43 days uh, from lunch. So it's very exciting times for us. And thank you for the Institute uh, uh, Andalus de Astrophysica for also this opportunity to join the, your lecture series. Well, I wanted to start by really sharing the excitement of the extraordinary times that we are living in, because what seemed science fiction uh, for us, perhaps when we were growing up, is science re reality today. And before, during our last lifetimes, we will see other humans going to other planetary surface. And with that, I want to share this. Ignition sequence start. All engines are Hemos dado pasos enormes. We choose to go to the moon and all this dictated about. Hemos conseguido lo estremecedor, lo asombroso lo innovador y hemos dejado una marca en los cielos cada uno de nuestros éxitos se apoya sobre el anterior y amplifica lo que es posible es hora de dar el siguiente gran salto estamos escribiendo el próximo capítulo de la exploración estadounidense volviendo a la luna para quedarnos y para poder ir más allá a Marte para expandir lo posible y aumentar nuestra comprensión. Los planes para estas misiones ya se están definiendo. Iremos con nuevos sistemas, 
diseños audaces y una visión sostenible. Lo puedes oír, probar, tocar. Vamos allá. Estamos entrenando, probando, infiltrando nuestro espíritu pionero en cada componente, definiendo nuestra determinación. de huellas. Se trata de ciencia sostenible y de alimentar el avance del alma humana. Porque somos los pioneros, los navegantes de estrellas, las pensadoras, las visionarias, los emprendedores. Y porque estamos sentados sobre los hombros de gigantes para ir más allá de lo que la humanidad ha llegado nunca. Añadiremos nuestros nombres a la lista de los mayores aventureros de la historia. Cada día, con cada misión, avanzamos esta llamada. Somos la NASA. Y tras 60 años, solo estamos empezando. Bueno, ese es nuestro presente y nuestro futuro. Y para todos y todas esas este, estudiantes, um, um, uy, perdón, I'm going to go to English again, and my apologies. Uh, yeah, no, so this is our, our present and future. And for all those uh, young uh, students that are online, I invite you to explore a career in a space exploration because a space exploration is part of everything we do and it will be part of everything we do even more in the future. So as you think about ideas for your thesis, for be it for your bachelor's, master's or PhD, a study, a study the missions that are forthcoming and what their payloads, the instruments that will be on board, and perhaps an idea, you will capture an idea from that, that will be the theme of your um, thesis. Well, with that, I want to start the next, uh, sharing with you um, the, this extraordinary mission that we call Lucy. Well, why did, why does uh, the name Lucy What is the connection between Lucy um, and what he was given uh, the mission this name? And it really is because in 1974, a humanoid, a proto-human, was discovered uh, by a paleoanthropologist, uh, Donald Johansson, in Ethiopia. And as Lucy taught us and is teaching us about our, uh, about our a species as about our origins as a species, the, the Lucy mission will teach us about our origins in our planetary system. So there's the link between Lucy the fossil and Lucy the mission. As uh, we mentioned, uh, the, mis the mission will be launched on, on Saturday, October 16th this year from Cape Canaveral in Kennedy Space Center at 5.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that, that is the, going to be a really early morning rise for all of us, but we probably will not sleep the night before and will be ready uh, for lunch uh, that very early. It should be an, a spectacular Uh, you know, an a spectacular show that we, we will invite you and you are all welcome to participate via virtually via just the website of uh, Lucy NASA. You can find the link to uh, join us in the lunch. Let me share now with you just an overview of the mission. Um, <laughs> Beyond the asteroid belt are fossils of planet formation known as the Trojan asteroids. These primitive bodies share Jupiter's orbit in two vast swarms, leading and trailing the planet. Now, NASA is preparing to visit seven asteroids. Embarking on a 12-year odyssey that will span Jupiter's orbit. One mission will explore these objects for the first time. Lucy, the 
first mission to the Trojan asteroids. Okay, so with that overview, I want to now share with you more details about the excitement of this epic journey that Lucy will be undertaking. And you could see here uh, as the, um, the spacecraft arrived to Cape Canaveral, I was transported um, by a C-17 and uh, you could see it here unloading and in the far right, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, is uh, where Lucy will reside and very shortly will be um, just included inside here the, um, as is put in, in the rocket in an Atlas uh, 5401, which will be launched on October 16th. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the spacecraft in detail. Lucy is an extraordinary uh, spacecraft. It really contains uh, um, three, uh, three main instruments, science instruments, two cameras that will help us navigate the T2 cams. And, um, and we also have an experiment using the telecommunication antennas, the, the high-end antennas, to determine the mass of the asteroids as the spacecraft flies by them. So we have the l Ralph, which is a, a really a, a camera and that will be able to, it's really two instruments in, ones, in one, and I'll show you more details and example of the type of information that each of these instruments will be collecting. Uh, then we have um, L for, all the L's are for Lucy, and then Lori, which is um, a high uh, fidelity, high resolution infrared, near infrared camera. Then we have a thermal emission spectrometer, L-TES, uh, and the two cameras, the T2 cameras that will enable us to navigate the spacecraft. But we will also use them for science because we will be using them some, um, to observe and potentially discover other asteroids or even rings around um, the Trojans asteroids, if that becomes the case. Well, I want to, uh, I'll show you more in detail, but these large blue circles are the main source of energy for all the subsystems in the spacecraft. It's the first time we're going really so deep, the NASA is sending spacecraft so deep into um, the solar system, fully powered by solar panels. On board the Lucy spacecraft, um, there is also a plaque, which it really is like a time capsule. We wanted to send a message to our future generations for those future space archaeologists that will find perhaps the, the spacecraft. And, um, and in the plaque, we have inspiration, inspirational messages from you know, musicians, artists, poets, writers, and including, I think, uh, Ringo from Lucy in the Skies. Uh, the song that, in a sense, inspired the name too, because uh, that's why the fossil, the fossil uh, in Ethiopia, was given the name Lucy, and 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 hence also the name of our mission. Well, uh, another point, important point to note is that the the Lucy trajectory can be maintained. Uh, for about 2 million years. You know, the spacecraft, if we don't do anything, it will just keep going and going uh, for about two, 2 more million years in that same trajectory. So that's why uh, the team thought that it was important to include a plat, like a time capsule, sending these inspirational messages. Well, let's talk then a little bit more about, uh, I wanted to give you examples of each of the instruments on board the Lucy spacecraft. Um, as I mentioned, one of the instruments is the called LORI, which is high, a high resolution camera in black and white. Here you can observe an image, an image from 
Charon, which is the largest moon of Pluto, because the New Horizons spacecraft actually had the same uh, suite of instruments on board, except it didn't carry the thermal emission spectrometers, but it does have um, the lower high resolution black and white camera as well that the Ralph, um, the instruments that we'll see an example of it, uh, of what New Horizons took in a, in a couple of minutes. But you can see that with Lori, we will be able to uh, determine and study the topography, the morphology of this, um, the surface of these asteroids and, and hence determine its, his, its geological history. How did the Trojan asteroids evolve? In this image of Caronte, or Charon, I'm sorry, you could see um, fractures, the circles are impact craters. And, you know, geologists, the way we determine relative ages of planetary surface is by counting the amount of impact craters on, on its surface. In this case, as you could see, the circles here are all impact craters. And each of those, the more impact craters in a surface, it means the older that surface is. So that's how we determine relative ages between uh, surfaces, and that's what we plan to do as well with the uh, with the Lucy mission, and that as we fly by the Trojan asteroids. Well, here's an image of L. Ralph. I, as I mentioned before, Ralph is really is two instruments in one. It has a multicolored camera, which you can see an example here that was taken by the New Horizons. Uh, mission of MU69, or more recently named Arokov, is um, this was in an overfly of Arokov that took place on January 1st of 2019 by the New Horizons uh, spacecraft of uh, really an extraordinary, very interesting object in the Kuiper Belt. So with these instruments on board of the Lucy a spacecraft, we also hope to detect and be able to detect the composition of the surface by with MBIC. And, as, and since MBIC is especially sensitive to potential organic uh, molecules on the surface. So it's, uh, it's been calibrated to detect that. So it would be very, very interesting to see what we find in the Trojan asteroids. The other instruments, which is part of the RAV suite, is an IR or an infrared spectrometer. And again, here you could see an example that it was taken on board of LISA, um, that is on board of the New Horizons spacecraft when it overflew on July 14, 2015, the um, Charon, uh, with the largest moon of Pluto, in which it actually discovered frozen ammonia on its surface. So the LISA instrument will allow us to determine the composition of the Trojan asteroid surface and this very exotic uh, uh, type of ices that we expect to find on the surface of the Trojans. And uh, finally, I wanted to show you an example of uh, the thermal emission spectrometer here, which is on board the OSIRIS-REx mission. I remember the OSIRIS-REx um, went and orbit the asteroid Bennu and, uh, and it's, it captured um, a sample of Bennu that it will be returned to the Earth in September 2023. And you could see here the redder, the higher the temperature, the bluer, the lower the temperature, temperature. And these are very minute. It's kind of like a thermometer. We can take the temperature of the surface of of the of whatever you know is is being observed by by the thermal emission spectrometer or by TESS. So um, these minute differences in in temperatures or the thermal emission, uh, you know the the asteroids capture the 
this heat from the sun and given its composition or density, you can determine the mechanical properties by the differences on how that sunlight is being observed by the surface of the asteroid. So that would be a very, it's a very good um, um, just way to determine the property, uh, the mechanical properties uh, of the surface of an asteroid. Well, what are the uh, scientific objectives of the mission? It, it would be to determine the, the geology, map its composition and proper and uh, mechanical uh, properties of the surface of the asteroids that will be flown, overflown by the Lucy mission, search potentially for new satellites. Uh, does any of these uh, objects may have uh, high concentrations of particles that, that will form ring likes, uh, you know, and try to determine that very complex uh, geological history and, and how this family of objects that are called the, the Trojan asteroids relate to other objects in our solar systems, uh, as we'll see. So Lucy will overfly, you know, will fly by um, really eight objects, as you will see, Eurybates, uh, Eurybates uh, recently they, the team discovered a new moon that's called Keta. And um, so we will overfly, the first um, flybys will be in Lagrange point number four, which will include then Eurybates, Polymy, Lucas and Orus. And then, um, then we'll go to the Lagrange point number five, which we will then uh, fly by Petroclus and Minicius. And I want to point to the different types of uh, um, asteroids that we will be over uh, flying by with the Lucy mission, because this is one of the key as scientific aspects of the mission is the diversity of the, ast the Trojan asteroids that will be, um, you know, that, that will be studied and observed by the Lucy mission. And we, we have uh, Eurybates, which is a C-type, a more carboniferous. Then we'll have um, Lucas and Oruk, Orus, which are more D-types, they are the most common type of uh, asteroid types in our uh, solar system. Then we have Polymele, which is the tiniest um, asteroid, uh, Trojan asteroid that the mission will be over, over flying. And then we have a very interesting binary equal pair of asteroids that are P-types like Polymele. So, and before I, I wanted to share something because it's something that will be happening very shortly in actually in Spain, as we will see, and is in a very unique occultation of polymely is, uh, and I wanted to share, okay, what is an occultation? It really an occultation is when an object goes in front of a very bright star and then is observed by uh, observatories here on earth. In, in this case, we're going to, um, so we use these occultations are extraordinary important techniques for the mission to be able to determine before it flies um, the Trojan asteroids, their shapes um, and potential, you know, just the shapes of these, uh, of these asteroids, of these Trojan asteroids. And we have an occultation coming up in Spain on October 1st of 2021. Uh, so just 15 days before the launch is going to be a very, very busy time. We are getting ready for the deployment. The telescopes are actually arriving this Friday to Gijón, Spain. Um, we will be conducting there uh, during um, September 27, 28th, that time frame. The rehearsals, we will all be training and we're welcoming volunteers to help us in this extraordinary uh, deployment uh, campaign of deployment of um, 22, 20, uh, 22 telescopes that will be deployed along the, the lines that you could see here, especially the black line. That's where we want to ideally be uh, located our, our 22 mobile telescopes. These are um, NASA telescopes that have traveled all over the world because we ha have used the same technique 
to determine the shape and size of MU69 uh, for the New Horizons mission, which, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it helped us have a very successful flyby uh, in uh, January of 2019. So we hope we are using the same techniques uh, of occultations for Lucy. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, I know the IAA and Rene and Jose Luis will be participating and we, we are welcoming more volunteers to help us on this amazing deployment uh, of, uh, to observe the occultation of polymelly. As I say, polymelly is the smallest object, it's the one we know its size and shape the least. So it's very important for the mission. Well, let's talk a little bit about what, what is our solar system? Because when we, when I went to school, they told me, okay, there are nine planets, that's our solar system. Now we know there's only eight planets, but, uh, but we have, a, you know, our solar, is, our solar system is a lot more complex. It's not only planets, it's composed of thousands, if not millions of, of different objects, asteroids, starting from the ones that you can see highly concentrated in the center, which is the asteroids that resides between Mars and Jupiter. They're called the main bell asteroids. But then we have this whole other family that are composed at the edge of our solar system, that, uh, of which Pluto is one of them, uh, of the Kuiper belt. It's not dirty. Uh, objects. So it's really, our solar system is a lot more complex, a lot more uh, rich than we ever thought before. And the Trojans that reside near Jupiter is another family. And we want to understand how all these families of objects relate, how did they originate it, to tell the story of, of our planetary neighborhood. So where is Lucy going? Lucy is going to the Trojan asteroids. And where are the Trojan asteroids? Well, the Trojan asteroids reside 60 degrees ahead of Jupiter, which is here in the Lagrange point number four, and 60 degree behind the orbit of Jupiter, which is Lagrange point number five. And Lagrange points are really parking spaces in our solar system with objects have accumulated from its formation and they reside there because it takes very little energy to, uh, to maintain that orbit. So that's why we have this gray accumulation and Lucy will go for the first time to start to study exp and explore the Trojan asteroids in the Lagrange points of Jupiter. It is important to note that Lagrange, all the planets have Lagrange points and basically anything very massive in our solar system has Lagrange points. Um, actually our planet, the Earth, uh, has two Trojan asteroids that have been found in uh, in the in the two Lagrange points that are the most stable because each planet has or each large mass body has five Lagrange points but the the ones that are stable are Lagrange point number four and number five and that's why the Trojan asteroids also reside there because those are the stable points the stable Lagrange points around a planet in this case uh, Jupiter for the Lucy mission, which will be overflying. And what we hope to, to explore, to understand is some of the key questions on, you know, how did our solar system form? We know we have four rocky planets, the Mercury, Venus, the Earth with the, with the Moon and Mars, and then we have this main belt asteroid uh, that are protoplanets that probably during the bombardment period more than four and a half million years ago, um, you know, they, they didn't quite form into planets and are the remnants left from planetary formation. But then we get to the large giants, the large gaseous giants planets, which is Jupiter being the largest planet in our solar system, followed by Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. And how did this, these bodies form? Did they reside in this, the same location uh, as they reside today? So 
these are some of the key questions that we have been asked on how our planetary neighborhood neighborhood form our solar system what uh, is uh, the role that the the trojan asteroids played and did they form the nucleus of these uh, gas giants and it's so by studying the trojan asteroids we can get to understand it's like looking deep into the the gas giants um how the the gas giants have changed in position in our solar system we know they have migrated in position where we see them orbiting today most likely is not where they originated and perhaps how the role that they play in bringing the molecule of water into the internal a uh, portion of our solar system that enable eventually for the earth to capture it and play such a key role for life to start uh, as we know it in our planet so is is that grand story that the trojan asteroid is going to help us unravel and try to inform a little bit more these key questions of planetary and solar system formation well, NASA is going to visit at a record speed, a record number of uh, new worlds, really new asteroids, and uh, at a velocity of more than 145,000 kilometers per hour. Here is our main protagonist, the Lucy spacecraft, as you could see, has an expand of 50 meters, of about 50 uh, feet and the spacecraft itself that you can see in the middle is about the size of a car and it weighs about a ton here i want to show you um this extraordinary set of uh, solar panels as you could see they are being tested at lucky martin who's the company they constructed the lucy spacecraft and there is incredible it's incredible technology because before they are deployed the thickness of these solar panels is all about four inches or about eight centimeters in, thin in thickness in thickness and it's like the the solar panels are weaved in this uh, piece of cloth really is, is quite extraordinary. I, I love to see the deployment as you could see how and we, we test those uh, in situ, then we have, we're testing them at um, Cape Canaveral as well. Um, you know, so we do a final test of all the key subsystems before the uh, final encapsulation, uh, encapsulation um, um, before the mission is launched. And uh, Lucy has really a very, very complex, uh, what we call opportunistic trajectory, because with one spacecraft, we can really, are going to be visiting eight new objects. And um, I want to, and here we have, it's quite complex, this diagram. So I, I will quickly walk you to, uh, its trajectory and it starts on the launch as I mentioned October 16 of this year then to what we use it to really save on fuel and to increment this the space the spacecraft velocity we use the technique called gravity assist and uh, you could see the trajectory here in red and then so we launch on October 16 and then a year later almost exactly October 15 of 2022 we come back to the earth we use the, the gravitational field of the earth to accelerate the spacecraft and uh, without using very much fuel so then that will enable us to uh, go back again and um, December 12th of 2024 to again use the gravity field of the Earth to accelerate the spacecraft farther, to then uh, go to our first object that we are going to overfly, which is the asteroid Donald Johansson, which as uh, you recall, Donald Johansson is the paleo uh, anthropologist who discovered the Lucy um, fossil in 1974 in Ethiopia. And uh, it is uh, this Donald Johansson will provide us 
the overflight of this asteroid will provide us an opportunity to really test all the systems, train the team, do our first true uh, operational, and really have the opportunity of um, learning about a new object, a new asteroid in uh, in the main belt. And this will happen on April 20th of 2025. Then from there, we go to explore the first Trojan asteroid, as you remember in Lagrange point number four, because we go ahead of the orbit of Jupiter and we go and explore Euripides. And Euripides, this will, is, as you recall, it, um, it the team just recently discovered a new, uh, a new moon of, uh, of Euripides, which uh, it was given the name of Enriqueta Basilico, or for short, we um, give it the name Keta, and she was the first woman to carry the Olympia, Olympic torch. So we wanted to continue in the tradition of honoring uh, great uh, um, Olympians and, and uh, athletes. And this will happen on August of 12th of 2027. Then from Euripides, from August of 2027, we go to September of 2027, almost a, just a month later, to overfly um, Polymelia, which is the smallest objects, the smallest Trojans that Lucy will explore is the one is our is uh, the object of our occultation in October 1st over Spain. So again, we need to learn more about its shape, its size, to better inform this overflight on October 15, 2027. Hence, why is so important the occultation of October 1st of this year? And why we're doing this large deployment in Spain uh, with the two, 22, the 22 NASA telescopes. Well, then from September 2027, then we go to April, just a few months later, April of 2028, to, over, to over, the overfly, the flyby of Leo Lucas, uh, which is a very irregular asteroid. One of the key questions we want to see is why some of these um, Trojan asteroids are spectroscopically more red than other. And you could see that uh, we will go after Lucas to explore Orus, which is also another very red um, Trojan asteroid. And are these, is, is, is the red due to a lot of uh, maybe the molecular of water that have provided uh, oxidite, the surface of these asteroids, of these Trojan asteroids. And that would could inform, tell us about the history of what happened, how the water molecule uh, transformed these, these surfaces in our solar system. And the Oros flyby will be November of 2028. And then from there, we return to the Earth because we finish exploring the Lagrange, uh, Lagrange point number four, the Trojans um, in that region. And we need to gain again more speed, more um, energy needs to be captured. So we return to the earth on Christmas of 20, 2030 uh, to do another gravity at six and then go to our final target for the prime mission, which is Petroclus ammunitions. A P-type of asteroid, very, very interesting, a binary set of equal mass asteroids, and we hope to really learn a lot to, to inform really more about the formation of, uh, of uh, our solar system and the roles of these binary uh, objects play. Uh, during uh, the solar system formation. This will be take will take place on March of 2033. That will be the end of the primary mission. But as I said, um, you know, this trajectory could be maintained for almost 2 million years. So the team will come back to NASA with a proposal for an extended mission. And uh, I'm pending, hopefully, all the subsystem, the spacecraft will continue to perform uh, well, and uh, so there is the potential of continuing. There's a lot more uh, 
Trojan science to come even after 2033. Well, I wanted to share with you a little bit and just finalizing here because it's so important. All the, the key of the success of all the NASA missions is due to the people, the people that compose these extraordinary teams of dreamers that they they capture an idea, they propose it, they persist. This is a, a story of persistence because you have to remember when when the team proposes these ideas to NASA, uh, you know, they've been working probably for five years. So by the time they get selected, they've been working on this potentially almost a decade until the mission gets selected in the case of Lucy in 2017. And now here we are in 2021 launching it. Yeah, and, it, and the team is composed of a very diverse uh, group of talents. Here we have the principal investigator, the scientist Donald Johansson with the beer, so you can see, and the P deputy principal investigator, Dr. Kathy Olkant. Uh, we have very talented group of uh, engineers that you could see here, group of uh, project managers, and even uh, students. Uh, because this is such a long duration mission, remember it will take 12 years in this epic journey that Lucy will undertake in October of this year. So we want, we have a succession plan, we want to that uh, we, we want a, a, this very young talent of uh, students to be trained so they can take uh, these positions in the future and continue the legacy of the Lucy exploration. And as part of that, we have what we call the NASA Academy. It's called Las Paz. I invite you to explore the, this website if you like to in a future participate. We are training. We have trained more than 40 almost 5,000 undergraduate students uh, to be part of the mission and not only of the Lucy mission, but to learn on what it is to be, um, to train the, the next generation of explorers, of scientists and engineers and technicians. And uh, so please, uh, please explore this website to be engaged. And there is other ways to, to participate in the Lucy mission. We are just launching a Lucy app challenge i'll share the i'm sharing this website you could go there and this is open to the all the planet everybody can participate and we have challenges at all different levels we have two lucy challenges one is uh, to capture the idea of of uh children on how they perceive the Lucy, the Trojan asteroids and what the Lucy mission, and they can share that via music, via art. Then we have another um, more sophisticated challenge and is this using light curves on, on how, you know, the brightness of these objects can really inform uh, the shapes of the Trojan asteroid. So I invite you to form teams, the instructions you can enroll. This is all free, it's open to everybody. Please explore this website. And the challenge will take place October 1st and October 2nd. So I uh, please um, uh, enroll quickly because I, it, it, uh, there is a short time frame. I'm formed form teams. So it's a, it's a very exciting activity to participate. And finally, just summarizing uh, the extraordinary epic voyage that Lucy is going to undertake. Uh, 12, in 12 years, it will explore eight new asteroids with one spacecraft uh, you are all invited for uh, Saturday, October 16, 5.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can join us via this website. And uh, go Lucy, 43 days and counting. Thank you so much for allowing me to share the information about the Lucy mission. We're all very excited. And I'm here if there are any, any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Adriana, for this wonderful talk. And now the talk is open for questions. Please, for doing that, pre press the reaction button so you can raise your uh, electronic hand. 
and then I will allow you to make the questions. There are some questions also in the YouTube channel. So please here, any question here? Okay, so uh, the first question, it's coming from the YouTube channel made by Astronautico. He want to know how long is the internal battery designed for? Okay, uh, hello Astronautico, thank you for your question. Well, uh, Lucy, uh, in, as we mentioned, you know, it has in its main power source uh, is really the solar panels. So it directs, it has uh, the capability really to last for many, many years, even a century, I mean, uh, or more, uh, the trajectory will continue. And as long as the solar panels are able to capture, uh, you know, the solar energy, the batteries that it, uh, that it has on board will, will really, um, uh, will continue to function. And the duration uh, is uh, the lifetime of the batteries are for many, many decades. So, so that uh, that uh, that is, uh, we will be testing it. You know, this is also all new technology because we have never uh, flown deep, this deep into space with, um, you know, with this technology. So it, uh, we are pushing the envelopes of what the tech, uh, the technical capability are, but we hope that they, they will last for several decades at least. Okay, thank you. Questions? Another question for Adriana? So I have one. It's really uh, interesting how you or the team will manage the uh, management of the data because, as you say, it is a very long mission. And so maybe the, maybe the PI or more, most of the people that are working today, they will not see the, the, the data because they will, they will be retired. So they need to prepare the, the young generations to be ready for the last flyby, of course. Yes, absolutely. That's a very good question. Thank you uh, for that. Because, you know, one of the requirements that NASA put in place when the mission was selected is you have to have a succession planning. Yeah. Really, who is going to have the key, um, who is going to be training who, and all the key personnel would be able to be, we are all replaceable, you know, it's just a matter of, of having the knowledge base being communicated, being documented, and, um, and that's what is happening. Um, that's why we have even students participating in the mission currently. Many of your students, uh, before Lucy ends, they will have their, their doctorates. <laughs> so even if you are in second grade today, by the time Lucy ends, you, will have, you, you, you definitely would have your doctorate beforehand if you go through. And, um, and we want them in, on board on the on the team on the mission, and that's why we also put in place the Las Paz, the NASA Academy, to train the next generation of explorers and to train all these uh, all these people. But also, we have to maintain the the spacecraft alive because it's not only sustainable for humans, but we have this very talented robot that is flying for us that is called Lucy and um, the way we are going to and um, we, we will have periods in which the spacecraft will be dormant you know so how do we maintain make sure all the subsystems are working correctly and we will have the the spacecraft will communicate at least once a week with the earth and say I'm okay here and, and we'll send us a message, you know, saying that it's okay, send us a brief uh, uh, summary of all, all the status of all the, the subsystems on board the spacecraft. So it's succession for humans and also maintaining the spacecraft alive for such a long period of time, which we have had experience. I mean, New Horizons, it was a good example. It took us about Nine, nine years and a half to get uh, to Pluto. Um, so, it, and it continues working and it continues. And we had to also work a succession plan 
for the key management positions there, the key personnel, the key knowledge base, and it has been working superbly well. So we know we have a good baseline for Lucy as well. Thank you. Any other question for Adriana? Maybe if you want, uh, we can talk a bit about the uh, occultation campaign that uh, will be here in, in, uh, in Spain in less than one month. Uh, if anyone wants to ask something, Adriana can uh, answer. Okay. Here, one hand, Jose Luis, please go ahead. Uh, hello, Adriana. Thank you very much for this nice overview of the uh, Lucy mission. Um, I wanted to ask you something just out of curiosity. Uh, um, do you know if there will be observations uh, during the cruise phase, I mean, will the, the instruments be hibernating or will they be active? Well, what we do is that we take the opportunity during the cruise phase to, yes, uh, is test, calibrate the instruments in, in the sense, um, work um, in a lot of the software planning, you know, because uh, a lot of the sequencing will be uh, adjusted, refined, and uploaded and tested. We do rehearsals, uh, you know, with, uh, we, we do uh, rehearsals in, you know, in which we rehearse year on earth, like we are doing the polymelia flyby and go through it. Uh, and we do it also with a live spacecraft. So we simulate uh, um, the sequence of observations uh, with the uh, spacecraft being live, like if the spacecraft was overflying uh, Polymeli or one of the Trojans, and then we receive the, you know, the sequence. And so we test and do a lot, a lot of rehearsals during that um, cruise phase. It's really that time uh, it will be very, very well used to prepare the team and optimize the science return. So thank you for your question, Jose Luis. I don't know if I address everything that you were trying to. Yeah, yes, to get. yes. Okay, you have another question from the from the YouTube. Uh, this spacecraft have a mobile instruments or is the spacecraft need to turn to point the instrument as a new horizon did? Uh, yes. Okay. So the it has you see the spacecraft has here a platform. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay. So that's the really the um, pointing platform where all the instruments um, pretty much uh, reside. And here is a a, a, a bigger. Um, the platform, all the instruments are fixed to that platform, so the platform needs to move. And um, depending what the observation, we may also need to move the spacecraft. So it can become quite um, quite complex, you know, the sequence of observations. But one of the tests and calibrations that we will be doing as well during cruise, like where Jose Luis was, Jose Luis was asking, is we'll be um, doing it a calibration of the alignment of the focal plane of all the instruments, you know, especially, um, you know, Lori and Ralph. Um, so, uh, and Lisa, so it is, uh, is one of the, uh, so, but, so we will be basically turning on all for some of the sequence of, of the observations, all the instruments at once, but except, you know, the thermal emission spectrometer uh, needs to be turned at different times than the other instruments. The other instruments need the sunlight, the thermal emission spectrometer, in the contrary, you know, can observe really in the dark to just uh, differentiate uh, and doing in the terminator areas uh, of the object to be able to to determine maybe even more sensitive to uh, temperature differences. So it, it all depends on the angle of our flyby. Um, 
on how we will be approaching and the team has been working very diligently in already uh, developing all the sequences. All the sequences have been put on board of the spacecraft, so they are autonomous in case, in case, you know, in the worst of cases, it will lose contact with the spacecraft. Uh, the spacecraft has a little bit of artificial intelligence, if we could call it that, to execute these sequences autonomously and then uh, record the information and eventually when we capture the signal supposedly in that you know in that scenario that i'm just describing uh, which is not a nominal scenario i'm describing as an, an anomalous scenario in which uh, we lose contact with the spacecraft the spacecraft could uh, still capture the information and eventually return it to the earth so but going back to the pointing platform yeah it's a fixed platform it has um it's like an arm and it has like a hinge that it could move and rotate at different angles and but but some observations will also require the the reorientation of the spacecraft so it's, it's a very complex dance in a sense when as the spacecraft uh, will fly by each of these objects thank you for your question okay thank you one more opportunity i know adriana need to go now so one more question. None in the chat. So thank you very much, Adriana, for this wonderful talk. Um, hope uh, we can see each, each one together in one month here in, in Spain, in the occultation campaign, or for another online talk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's 10 o'clock. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay, Go, Lucy. Bye. <laughs> Bye.